Hello everyone, welcome back to Dentist Zen. Today we are here with a new video on direction of enamel rods. We are continuing with our lectures on the topic enamel. We have already discussed structure and ultrastructure of enamel rods in the previous videos. In today's video, we are going to learn about the direction of enamel rods. Where do they start their journey? What is the finishing point? At what angles? We are going to learn everything. Also, this is a part of your long question on structure of enamel, where you have to write all these things for your answer. We have already covered the first two parts, that is structure of enamel rods and ultrastructure in the previous two videos. In today's video, we are going to cover the third part, that is direction of enamel rods. Let's begin. Before we start, I want you to quickly subscribe to Dentals and if you have not done that till now, also hit on the bell icon so that you remain notified about new, new videos. We are going to understand the direction of enamel rods by dividing it into simpler parts. First, we will get to know where do they start their journey, what is the finishing point and at what angles. That means we are going to know about the direction of these rods, where they are heading. Second, if there are any difference in the direction of these rods in primary teeth and permanent teeth, if yes, then what it is. Third, is this direction of enamel rod so simple or are there any other hidden superimposed patterns that we should know of? And based on this superimposition of all these patterns that rods take, what is the term that is used to describe this course of enamel rods? So let's start. First, what is the direction of rods? Now, these rods are starting their tough journey at the dentine surface. Yes, that is at dentino enamel junction and they are heading outwards to reach the outer surface, tooth surface or enamel surface. So are they starting this journey at right note? Absolutely, they are starting this journey at right angles to the dentine surface. Right angles or perpendicular or 90 degrees to the dentine surface. So they are starting here at 90 degrees. As they go outwards, they show slight inclination towards the cusp as they pass outwards like this and gradually they become more oblique and finally they reach the outer surface like this. So these enamel rods are reaching the outer surface and in the region of the cusp tips here as they go outwards they become almost vertical like this. So they are almost vertical in the region of incisor edges in case of incisor teeth and cusp tips in case of molars and premolars. So that is the direction of enamel rods starting at EJ, ending at enamel surface, starting at right angles and then ending at occlusal surface becoming vertical in incisal edge and cusp tips. Second, what is the difference in these rods direction in primary teeth and permanent teeth? In the occlusal region, they are almost same. Then where is the difference? Difference is in the cervical region. Can you appreciate the difference? Let's magnify and see. So, in the occlusal two-thirds, the direction of enamel rods is same for both. That is, they are starting from the dentine going outwards. Starting from dentine going outwards. But what is happening in the cervical region? Let's see. In the deciduous teeth or the primary teeth, in the central parts and the cervical parts, rods run in horizontal direction like this they are running horizontally starting from the entire enamel junction towards the enamel surface they are running in horizontal direction then what about the permanent teeth in permanent teeth the cervical region what do you think is that direction is it horizontal no rods are starting here and they are going downwards a pikely they are deviating a pikely a pikely towards the apex of the root of the tooth so that is the difference and that is your viva question that is what is the direction of enamel rods in primary teeth and in permanent teeth in their cervical region so it is horizontal in case of primary teeth and it is deviated a pikely in case of permanent teeth now what are the other superimposed patterns what do you think the direction is so simple as it looks no this journey is so difficult enamel rods have to go through many other patterns they have to go through so many bendings to reach their final destination so what are the other two patterns which we can see because of which each enamel rod shows an irregular course so the two patterns when we see them in the three dimensions we can see the other two patterns that is First, if we see the enamel rods in the transverse plane of the tooth like this, these enamel rods are turning right, left, right, left like this. So they are bending to the right and left directions in the transverse plane of the tooth. 
but what but when we are looking at them in the vertical plane like this vertical plane of the tooth these rods are bending in another direction they are going up down up down like this so what is happening here that means as the rods are going from dentino enamel junction to the outer surface dentino enamel junction to the outer surface they are not only going like this but they are turning right and left as well as up and down so they are bending in two directions so what do you think is it a simple and easy path no not at all it is an irregular course so now our rods are taking right left turns in transverse plane and up down turns in vertical planes and is following an irregular course but there is an exception here where is the exception exception is in the transverse plane in the cervical region of the teeth here the enamel rods do not bend in left and right direction but they remain straight so that is the only exception so if we look at the enamel in the inner tooth hole that means if the enamel is from here to here and we look at the inner tooth hole of the enamel what is happening to enamel rods here they are bending right and left up and down along with that they are also bending like this that is intertwining they are going around each other as well so this is making the pattern more complex so in approximately inner two thirds of the enamel here the inter adjacent group of rods they intertwine that is they go around each other like this and they have different orientations here oh god such a complex path they are taking so we see that the enamel rods are not at all taking an easy path they are rarely straight throughout so what is this path this path is described like a wave so the term which is used to describe this path of enamel rods from dentino enamel junction to the tooth surface is called tortuous or wavy or sinusoidal or undulated and that is your viva question the term used to describe the course of enamel rods now these deviations these bends in the enamel rods can be easily seen when we take different cross sections at the middle of the crown that is if the crown is from here to here and in the middle part of the crown if we take thin horizontal sections which are called horizontal discs like first disc and second disc then the enamel rods in first disc if they are going in the left direction in the adjacent next disc they are going totally in the opposite direction that is in the right direction so they are bending in the opposite direction if we take these horizontal discs like this so let's see how they appear under the microscope in one disc the rods in the first disc in the one disc the rods will start from dentine they are starting from dentine and bending sharply towards the left side so they are going in the left side in the next disc in the adjacent disc the rods are again starting from the dentine but they are bending towards the right side towards the right side so you see rods are turning clockwise counter clockwise clockwise counter clockwise so if we take multiple sections these alternating clockwise and counter clockwise deviation can be observed at all levels of the crown like this if we take cut discs at multiple levels multiple planes in the direction of enamel rods what if we cut an oblique plane like this if we cut a section in oblique plane what will be the orientation can you imagine it is so more complex so if the discs are cut in oblique plane especially near the dentine in the region of cusps and the incisal edges or incisal edges rod arrangement appears to be further complicated as we already discussed that in this region rods are not bending only in the transverse plane and vertical plane but they are also turning bending around each other which is called the intertwining so there is intertwining more irregular intertwining is seen here by the bundle of rods and this appearance which is seen that is intertwined enamel rods when it is seen under microscope optical appearance is given the term gnarled enamel which is very very important term in the structure of enamel and we are going to discuss it in detail in our next video 
Now, what happens if the enamel surface is not smooth? If it is, it has pits or it has fissures, then how these enamel rods will head will reach their final destination? So, in case enamel rods forming developmental pits and fissures, like in the occlusal surface of premolars and molars, there the these enamel rods will converge like this as you can see here they are inclining to towards the common point so they converge in their outward course in pits and fishes so here we get our two important entrance questions about the direction of enamel rods definitely their origin and their termination point so enamel rods where do they originate at dentino enamel junction at what angle 90 degree can be plus minus 10 degree so 80 to 100 degree range that is the first entrance question second where do they end they meet the enamel surface at what angle now this angle is different according to the region cervical region occlusal region pits and fissures so in the cervical region they meet at 90 degree angle in the occlusal surface they form about 60 degree angle and in the pits and fissures they end at about 20 degree angle to the surface so here we get the summary of this video that is direction of enamel rods first thing we have to tell about the origin that is at dentino enamel junction at what angle at right angle right note 90 degree where do they end at enamel surface angle it is different for cervical region it is 90 degree occlusal it is about 60 degree for pits and fishes it is 20 degree then what is the difference in direction of enamel rods in primary and in permanent teeth in the occlusal two-thirds it is same but in the cervical region for the primary teeth it is horizontal whereas for the permanent teeth it is apically directed in the cervical region then what are the other superimposed patterns or directions enamel rods are bending in multiple directions in the transverse plane they are going left and right and in the vertical plane they are going up and down so based on all these superimpositions we get the final term for the course of enamel rods and this is called tortuous or wavy or sinusoidal or undulated such deviations can be easily seen when we cut thin horizontal discs in the middle part of the crown in one disc the enamel rods will be seen to be going in the left direction and in the other or the next disc they are totally in the opposite direction in the right direction so that is all for this video direction of enamel rods let's check what have you learned first what is the direction of enamel rods uh -huh. you have to tell where do they start where do they end and at what angles second what is the difference of direction in enamel rods in primary teeth and in permanent teeth that is in the cervical regions and third and the final question what is the term used to describe this course of enamel rods so if you really like the video do tap on the like button share the video with your friends keep learning keep watching keep smiling and good luck for your exams see you in the next video till then take care bye bye